Wow. F***ing hell. Why am I so surprised? Welcome to Next Level Kitchen, where I'm putting the challenge to my fellow judges and myself to give you amazing recipes to help take your cooking to the next level. Now, today, we're cooking one of my favorites. We are heading to Italy, where I'm challenging myself to elevate a chicken cacciatore to the next level. Basically, the hunter's chicken. The starch behind this dish is this quick fire polenta. I've got boiling chicken stock. You can make this with vegetable stock as well. But this is a really fine, beautiful polenta that literally cooks in minutes. And the good news about this is once you've used it, the leftovers you can refrigerate, cut into croutons, and fry. And they're the most amazing crouton, especially in a salad. First off, I want to get the flavor into this category. So I'm going to start cooking the chicken first. Now, I want to sort of get this dish nice and rich. First off, season the chicken lightly. Salt and pepper. I'm going to cook this skin side down so I can render that fat down into the pan we go. Again, always lay away from me so there's no splashing of fat up your arm. In, and literally get that chicken cooked. Really important to get some color on these chicken thighs. You can use drums or a chicken breast, but I love using the thigh, the brown meat. That's exactly where the flavor is. And look at that skin. The skin's got so much flavor. Now, get your stock and bring that up to the boil. Before you add the polenta, taste the stock. Really important. So, it's really nice, but it needs seasoning. And if you season the stock, the polenta will take care of itself. So, a nice little pinch of salt in there first. I also like adding a touch of olive oil to that stock. And that gives a really nice sheen to the polenta. And polenta is such an easy, delicious thing to make. And goes well with chicken cacciatore. Now, I'm not cooking the chicken yet. All I'm doing is searing them off. And once you've got the color, as you can see, I've got that nice chicken fat in there. Take my chicken out for two minutes. And now I've got all that flavor in that pan. And here's how this dish starts to elevate. Onion, literally. Not too fine, okay? This thing is a sort of, it's almost like a rustic dish. Cacciatore means the hunted. And it's a dish that dates back centuries. Onions in, in that chicken fat. Beautiful. Now, fill it up, whole onion. Again, this is the kind of dish with four chicken thighs can feed a family of four. Again, not too fine on the onion, because this thing cooks and when you're pushed against the thyme, sticking it in the oven for literally half an hour, nothing wrong with that at all. Now, in. Onions in. And now we're gonna start adding that flavor. I'm gonna build in a little touch of olive oil. I've got some fresh rosemary. Just literally pull that off the stem. Some fresh thyme. And just pull those little buds down and literally pull them from the stem and then from there with your knife just go through them once nice and rough in and now we're starting to build in that flavor it's a very rustic charming dish and something that really dates back centuries in italy and there are so many variations of this dish i love it i absolutely love it now Flatten out those onions, okay? I said this originates from Italy, so we can be a little bit more generous with that olive oil. In. And think of that olive oil flavor now with that beautiful chicken fat. Mushrooms, in. No slicing of them, whole. Tomatoes, in. And literally, let that blister down. Let all the water come out of those mushrooms and let it cook down. Now, keep the heat nice and hot and then just spread all those onions. The color of this dish when it comes out is beautiful. I love it. Turn up the gas. Now, 
Again, a little touch of salt, and now a little couple of cubes of butter. And this is where it really starts to get even more tastier because that chicken fat is doing its job. The tomatoes are blistering, the mushrooms are sauteing, and those onions are almost just sort of adding so much sweetness. A little touch of chili flake. It's gonna be a little bit of heat. And obviously with the kids, don't worry about the flakes, but it's just a really nice way of adding a little bit of heat to this dish. Now, cook that down. As you can see, it's all starting to melt into one beautiful pot. Now, this is where the sauce starts to take on a little league of its own. Touch of tomato puree, okay? I always like to get that into the center of the pan. And about a tablespoon, and then literally roast it off. The difference in flavor when you roast tomato puree is night and day. Take the back of the spatula and roast that tomato puree. That gets rid of the acidity and gives it a really nice roasted tomato flavor. And once you've roasted at the bottom of the pan, then start incorporating it across the rest of the onions, the mushrooms and the tomatoes. And look, it's all starting to cook down really nicely. And then, literally, everything's starting to combine into one. Honestly, as a really good chef's tip, roasting that tomato puree off, the difference is night and day in terms of flavor. Now look at those colors, beautiful. Now we're gonna build in more layers of flavor. Olives, just dot them around. Again, keep them whole. The nice thing about this dish, there's nothing complicated. There's all amazing flavors that come together, especially when it goes in the oven. From there, my capers. My capers give it that little bit of acidity, okay? And it really does give that nice sort of sour taste to it. A little touch of red wine, just a touch. Let that evaporate, really important. You can see it coming together. This dish takes about 20 minutes from start to finish. But honestly, you can do this with whole chicken thighs, the drum and the thigh, and literally let it cook for an hour and a half. There's nothing that's gonna overcook in here. It needs to be overcooked to taste absolutely delicious. Now, stock, get that up to a boil before we put the chicken in the oven. Now that we've reduced the red wine, look what's happened to those tomatoes. They're all blistered. And that's gonna be a nice little fresh tomato puree in there. That's why it's important to put them in early so you get all the nice sweetness coming out of those tomatoes. And look, you can identify the mushrooms, the tomatoes are disappearing, and got this really nice sort of fragrant, almost stew-like of vegetables. Beautiful. Now, your can of tomatoes. And just fold in your can, another season, and then give that a really nice mix so it all starts to blend in together. Now, you can add a bit of stock here if it's getting a little bit too thick, or water. I prefer stock for obvious reasons. The flavor is so much better, but it's so easy to do. Mm. Check your seasoning. Touch more salt. A little touch of pepper. And now, a little bit of acidity. Some delicious, Balsamic vinegar, you'll see why. It darkens this stew, but it gives a really nice flavor, especially to those olives. I'm thinking the ingredients in there. Now, we get our chicken. And our chicken goes literally back in. And we sort of submerge it in to those resting juices. And literally, Dunk it down so that skin is literally on top and nice and crispy. Rest and juices into that sauce, really important. And then from there, this whole thing goes in the oven, literally. A low oven, 15 minutes max. In we go. Now the polenta. The stock is boiled. I've seasoned it as it comes to the boil. Gently sprinkle in your polenta and whisk at the same time. If you throw it in too quickly, it'll go lumpy. And this is a really nice way 
of serving a delicious polenta, especially cooked in chicken stock. And now that it's boiling, it starts to thicken up nicely. And it's almost like the consistency of custard. I like it quite thick. And then, look, beautiful. Once you've got the thickness, take it off the stove and start correcting that seasoning. Mm, touch more salt. And now we're gonna start loading up. And this is where this polenta goes into orbit. Beautiful aged Parmesan. I like a little bite with my polenta. So a little bit of fresh pepper and then a nice tablespoon of butter. And now you whisk this thing. But look what happens. It just starts to take on this sort of richness and it becomes regal and delicious. The butter gives it that really nice creamy taste. Again, correct the seasoning. Mmm. Wow. Now, just to finish that, some parsley. Again, loosely chopped. And that goes in right to the very end. Give that a really nice mix. Beautiful. So you almost want it like just dropping through that whisk. And because it's so fine, it cooks out so quickly. And now, the beautiful Italian kiss. Just drizzle your extra virgin olive oil over and sort of give it its final coat of jewels where it becomes shiny, rich, and that extra virgin olive oil gives it that really nice, grassy, delicious flavor. Look at that. That is beautiful. Now, one more garnish, and that's my broccolini. Mmm, that is so good. I've just cut my broccoli in half, the stems. I'm gonna drizzle them with some extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna season them with some salt and pepper, and then a light dusting of chili flakes. Roll that round. There's something quite nice about a crunch with broccolini. It goes so well. And also, oiling the broccolini now, not putting oil on the grill, stops everything from going crazy. So I just get the stems, side down, the bits that I've literally cut, and I sort of place them on top and just press them in. A little tip, once you've got them on, just get a little weight. A little bit of pressure on there. I like to use a lid and look, push them down. So once you've got the smoke, you call the fire brigade. Love that. Beautiful. Doesn't this remind you of f***ing Snoop Dogg's kitchen? <laughs> now, look, they're glazed, they're marked, and the flavor of this broccoli Listen, it is sort of renowned as one of the most boring veg. This way for me, drizzle with olive oil, cooked from raw, the bites and the chili flakes are incredible. From there, look at that, the flavor is incredible, but it's the bite. This way for me is such a delicious way. And then from there, again, a little touch of extra virgin olive oil and then for a little touch of acidity and age, balsamic vinegar. It is so good. I can eat broccoli like this all day long. Just let them sit. Now, think about it. The rapid fire polenta, grilled broccoli. And now, the cacciatore. Oh man, look at that. Bubbling and juicy. That is so beautiful, so beautiful. This is a perfect family meal for me because we started off with four chicken thighs and it's evolved into this amazing, beautiful, big dinner. Polenta sits beautifully. And that's why I put a little touch of olive oil at the end there because it stops you from getting a skin. And look, generous with the polenta, but really generous. 
I've worked hard today, so I'm gonna get two spoons of that polenta. And then this broccoli just sits each side of that amazing polenta. And when you look at the actual yield of this dish and how cheap it is to make, honestly, it's a huge staple in our house. Look at that, beautiful. The freshness in that broccoli is incredible. I take my marinade, it goes over and over. And now for the exciting bit. I get my spoon and I literally spoon the juice of that cacciatore underneath. No. And then literally sit that on top. The smell is beautiful. Select your beautiful thigh and sit that on top. And then I have to do it. I spent a year in Italy working and olive oil, honestly, just a touch over the top. Drizzled and drizzled. And then that little touch of salt at the end. But it's not just salt. It's aged Parmesan that just puts this dish into the Premier League of Italian cuisine. Chicken cacciatore. Mmm. Bella, bella, bella. Thank you so much for watching. Now, please let me know in the comments what you think of the dish and don't forget to subscribe for more exciting videos. Thank you.